like that might sound harsh, but responsibility, if you're not used to taking accountability for your own actions and personal responsibility, it sounds harsh. It sounds tough. It sounds fucking mean, but it's not. It's being honest with yourself. The shit that happened to you may not be your fault. The trauma that you've you know, you've undergone in your life, that's not your fault. Those things happen to you and those things aren't your fault. But you know what is your responsibility now? Addressing those issues, addressing the, that trauma. You need to deal with that and process that in a healthy manner. You need to take ownership and show the fuck up for yourself. For you to see change, you have to take ownership. Welcome to Cut the Crap with Beth and Matt, the world's number one no bullshit health and fitness podcast. Are you ready to cut the crap with your diet and exercise, get strong as fuck, and build a healthy relationship with food? Then you've come to the right place. Let's, Let's go. go. If you'd like to support us in the podcast, join our Patreon where you get exclusive content, which consists of monthly workouts you can do at home or at the gym, monthly challenges that are either strength, habit, or mindset based, and access to over 100 plus low calorie, high protein, family friendly meals. These are all designed by a professional chef who is certified in nutrition. These recipes are already in my fitness pal for easy fucking tracking. New recipes are also added each week. We believe that fitness is for everyone. So this is our way of getting you started on your health and fitness journey at a price most everyone can afford. So what the fuck are you waiting for? We'll see you in the Patreon. Hi. Hey, Nerdle. What is up? What's up, Nerdle? I feel like we haven't done a one-on-one in a long time. I know. We're overdue. We are overdue for some Beth and Matt action. Let's go. What's new with you? It's my son's 11th birthday today. Happy fucking birthday, Johnny. 11. It's crazy. Yeah. Your son has a birthday in a couple days. Two days. Yeah, he'll be 13. My God, I have a teenager. Shit. Scares the shit out of me. Because I was a little asshole when I was 13. <laughs> Thankfully, he is a much more mature um, and respectable young man than I was when I was his age. So That's good. <laughs> yeah, what was I doing when I was 13? I was just an asshole. I wasn't like getting like into serious trouble, but I was just an asshole. It was in the 80s, so you know, I didn't get into much trouble. Not in New Hampshire. Where'd you grow up? Connecticut? Connecticut. Yeah. Connecticut. I, think I was yeah. dancing to Michael Jackson in my room or something, you know. Thriller. <laughs> yeah. Madonna, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. King and Queen of Pop. Into my records. There you go. What else is new with you? Uh, I just a- got asked to do like a training, a TikTok training for these people. It's kind of like a, a coaching mentorship, the fit biz something Aaron and gosh I'm like botching these people's names I'm really fucking sorry Aaron Edmondson I believe her name is me and Hunter went to their seminar in Arizona and she asked me to do a teaching for their coaches on a zoom call so how to grow a TikTok audience so that's that's actually gonna be cool for me yeah I'm excited for that because I know helping other coaches and and coaching other coaches with like social media and their business is like something that we're both wanting to get into so that's really cool that you're it is that you've got that opportunity um, it's a stepping stone into doing speaking again, engagements because yeah. people have been asking me, when are you going to do a speaking engagement? Da, da, da. Um, and so I actually asked Aaron when I was there, I was like, just so you know, for future reference, um, if you're ever interested in, in like having us, you know, me speak and she's like, you know, actually I'll, I'll be contacting you. So this is like a first step for it, which is very kind of, cool. Yeah. That's exciting. That's exciting. Mm-hmm. And I'll be, um, I'm actually going to Arizona next week for, um, a seminar for a conference actually. Ooh. It's not necessarily like an industry conference, but it's um, it's for like sales and marketing and systems building. And okay. systems building is what I'm wanting to spend this year on focusing for my business. Uh-huh. So I'm really excited for that. And, you know, there's going to be all kinds of coaches there from all kinds of different industries. So it's going to be really cool to, to network as well. Um, you never know what will come out of those types of things. So I'm excited. Obviously, I mean, you're getting a, a speaking engagement out of, sure. out of the one you went to. See, that's why you go to meet other yeah, people and uh, for sure other opportunities. Yeah, that's exciting. That's mm-hmm. exciting. How are you doing with your New Year's goals, your resolutions, um, your yearly goals? Are you are you on track with those things personally? So far, yeah. I I you know wanted to run a couple times a week, and actually we have been doing that. Mm-hmm. So I've been just doing it, no stress on myself, just running on the treadmill for 30 minutes. I put my little timer on when it's done, I stop or I just keep going. And I found it relatively pretty freaking easy and fun for me. Fun. That's what matters. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because I've had people, you know, ask me, why did you stop running? And I'm like, I never did stop really. Just really stops talking about it probably as much. I think that people don't understand that we don't have to talk about everything that we're doing. You right. Know, you know, my entire fucking life, you know, like you guys, Hey, everyone, I stopped running. 
<laughs> Fuck running. Yeah. No, I still do it from time to time and more now than I was. Yeah. Are they talking about stopping running because we were doing the couch to 5k over the summertime or I, don't know. I just got some uh, DMS like, or, you know, in my question boxes on Instagram, like, why did you stop running? And because I guess maybe I was talking about it before if these people have followed me for a while, I was really, you know, into racing and running and kind of just stopped. But also like your goals change. Like that's, that's not your main thing you're doing anymore. That's not, I don't have time. Yeah. If I did, I would be training for a race right now. Yeah. I, you know, we're building businesses. And before that, I had time to train for a fucking marathon that I never, didn't get to run because of COVID. And then after COVID, I just started building my business. So I, d- I haven't really, you know, had 30 mile running reeks like I used to. I just mm-hmm. don't have the fucking time for it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Something's got to give and and you're not using that as an excuse. You're just saying mm-hmm. something's got to give and I don't have the capacity to do this thing right now. And that's, that's the thing. Yeah. I'm getting my strength training in and my mm-hmm. 10,000 steps a day. And that's your, mo- your most important right things, now. the things that are important to you. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? So my goal, of course, for the year is to do that 500 miles of hiking, which mm-hmm. I've talked about that a little bit on Instagram and my, in my Facebook and stuff. Definitely behind on that. I've gotten five miles in so far, but I knew that it wasn't going to be a linear thing, right? I've talked openly about how I'm not going to be able to hit my 10 miles every week and and things like that. So what I am doing, um, I'm considering myself still on track because I know I'm going to get there. I'm going hiking. I'm going to go for a nice little hike this weekend in my area. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm in Arizona next week, I'm staying two extra days. So the conference ends Saturday. I'm going to stay Sunday and come home Monday. I'm actually going to go to Sedona Saturday night and go hiking in Sedona. Um, I'm staying in a fucking yurt overlooking the Cathedral Rock, which is going to be really cool and just hike my ass off that day. So I'm going to get a lot of miles then. So yeah, I'm on track and I'm, I'm, I haven't talked about it much. I want, I want to start doing my blog posts as my way of holding myself accountable Mm -hmm. because I said, I'm going to do this thing. So here's me doing this thing. Right. But also just to kind of get other people involved with it too. Oh, on that note, accountability, Matt. Accountability. Yes. Let's uh, talk about okay. accountability. accountability and personal responsibility. What is accountability? Oh boy. So accountability, the way I look at accountability is this is the thing you said you're going to do. Did you do it? Yes or no. If you didn't do it, that's your own fucking fault type thing. Like it's being, being willing to accept the consequences that are resulting from your choices, actions, and behaviors. That's kind of the way I look at it. Yes. And you're exactly right. The obligation or willingness to accept responsibility for one's actions, responsibility, accountability, they kind of go hand in hand pretty much. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is what we see so much of with everything that we talk about on social media and the, the lack of accountability and more importantly, the lack of personal fucking responsibility. And I know, I know it grinds our fucking gears because we talk about it every day. We talk, you and I, in our private text messages and stuff, we're like, what the fuck? Like nobody wants to be fucking responsible for their own actions, right? Mm -hmm. You're only harming yourself. You're only, exactly. You're only keeping yourself from getting the results. It might make you feel better to not be responsible in that moment, but long run, it's not doing you any favors. You're not going to change. You're not going to get better by not taking responsibility. And I'll be the first to admit it. Earlier in my early 20s, I did not want to be responsible. I, I refused to take responsibility for my own fucking actions. I got a DOI. It wasn't my fault. It was yeah. uh, my friend's fault that called me at two o'clock in the morning to come party with them. You know, No, it was my choice to do that. Mm -hmm. looking back at it, it was absolutely my fucking choice. That's responsibility. My dad would always harp on me. Oh, it's never your fault. It's everybody else's fault other than your own. And that's, that's just dodging responsibility right there. Yeah. Yeah. And we can, we, we, we see this a lot too, with things like, let's say there's a spouse, a husband and wife couple, and let's say the, the, the wife, the woman has a tendency to binge eat Oreos, right? And she can do good if they're not in the house. But then one day her husband brings the Oreos home. It's my husband's fault. He knows I can't be around Oreos. It's his fault for bringing them in the house. No, it's not his fucking fault. It's not his fault. It's your responsibility to repair that relationship so you can exist peacefully around the fucking Oreos. That is that is reflect, rejecting responsibility by saying it is your husband's fault for bringing your trigger food into the house. That's not his fault. It's your fault. For, for not addressing the issue. And like that might sound harsh, but responsibility, if you're not used to taking accountability for your own actions and personal responsibility, it sounds harsh. It sounds tough. It sounds fucking mean, but it's not. It's being honest with yourself. 
and everyone around you, especially yourself. You can't get mad at somebody for holding you accountable, right? You're like, oh my God, you're right. You should just say, you know what? You're right. And I am not accountable. Like just admit it. But by by fucking beating around the bush, who's that helping? It's not helping fucking anyone because we know you are not being accountable, but you're trying to backtrack and say that you are. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. You're only hurting yourself. For sure. For sure. So you need to stop blaming others. We can learn to become personally responsible by first understanding that our actions and consequences of those actions are solely up to us. And Jared Hamilton made a good, he mentioned this on our episode with him. The shit that happened to you may not be your fault. The trauma that you've you've undergone in your life, maybe it's a shitty upbringing and trauma related to your childhood. That's not your fault. Those things happen to you and those things aren't your fault. But you know what is your responsibility now? addressing those issues, addressing the, that trauma. It's no longer that person's fault. It, it, you know, you need to deal with that and process that in a healthy manner, whether that means therapy, whatever, but that is now your responsibility to address those issues. You can't just go around in life blaming other people because you had a shitty upbringing. Lots of people had a shitty upbringing and lots of people choose to not let that impact their life any longer and they do something about it. Yeah. I also see lack of accountability when it comes to when you hire a coach. Yeah. Let's talk about that. There's that saying, you know, everyone wants account. Everyone wants accountability until someone holds you accountable. Right. You had that post the other day. I think that did pretty well for you. Actually, it did a lot. It did really well with coaches. Mm, Okay. That's interesting. Not so much with not coaches, which is very interesting. It didn't usually get like a thousand plus like likes on a Mm -hmm. tweet post. It got maybe like 600 most of the reposts were from coaches. Were people getting upset or what? No one okay. said it was like crickets. So just coaches were like, yeah, this is spot on. Crickets, the coaches were in the comment section, like mic drop, whatever the hell. And few, a few followers did say, you know what, you are right. But I didn't get much, which is interesting, right? Yeah, I would ex- actually expect some pushback there. Yeah. So a coach's job, right, is to help you be accountable, right? We give you the tools for you to show up. Mm-hmm. But we can't make you show up. We, we can't cannot make you do these things. Like we could be like, you know, here, here's your nutrition breakdown, whatever it may be. And um, can you please check in daily with these stats, whatever they may be? I'm just, you know, giving out examples here. And if we don't see you for a few days or you don't show up for yourself for a few days. Um, and we're checking in on you. We don't hear anything. How are you being accountable? We are showing you here. Here it is. You wanted us to help you be accountable, but where the fuck are you? Right. We're, we're holding up to our end of the bargain by holding you accountable and trying to. That's not doing anybody any good Mm-mm. because we're here to help guide you through the bad, through the good, through. That's why, you know, you hire a coach, um, not just because you're you're doing well. If you're doing well, you wouldn't need a coach. Right. That's what I always tell people. I'm not here for you when things are going well. Right? I'm, I'm here for you when it's inevitable something's going to go bad and you're going to be going through a tough time in your life. That's really what we're here for as your coach. Yeah. You hiring someone to help you be accountable does not mean chasing you down. Agreed. We're adults here. We are not your babysitter. We're not your babysitter. You need to take ownership and show the fuck up for yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're not blaming others. Um, we're not going to take things personally, right? Um, and that goes a long way with accountability is not taking things personally. So what I mean by that is when you and I make a video about, say, calorie deficit, very common one, right? And then people will say, I'm in a calorie deficit and I'm not losing weight. The calorie deficit doesn't work. When we tell them that you're not in a calorie deficit, we're not attacking you personally. We're we're just hitting you with the facts because we right. know that if you are in a calorie deficit, your body will change. Your you will lose fat as a result of that. So if that's not happening, you are clearly not in a calorie deficit. By us telling you that you're not in a calorie deficit, it's not to say you're fucking up and we're not attacking you. Right. It's just saying, hey, no, let's rethink this. What's going on? Maybe you're just not tracking right. Maybe you're tracking 50% of the time. Maybe um, there's so many other variables in it that can go into this. Um, you know, Maybe you're just overestimating your, your exercise and things like that. It's not to say that you're a failure. Yeah. And for you to get um, defensive and angry about someone just telling you the facts and saying, well, no, it's probably my hormones or no, I'm doing everything fucking perfect. That's well, avoiding I'm, personal responsibility. Obviously, there. Something is happening that is not putting you in a calorie deficit. So let's try to figure this out rather than you attack us. Yeah. 
let's get to the bottom of it because yeah, maybe it is your that. hormones, but, but if you're sitting there and saying it's your hormones, but you're not doing anything to fucking address your hormones, that's not responsibility. You're just blaming your hormone, hormonal issues. So then get them fucking tested. So get them fucking tested. And if they're irregular, then get them, get on medication or make the necessary lifestyle changes that you need to. That's mm-hmm. called responsibility. Yes. Mm-hmm. With accountability too. It just kind of, it all comes full circle and we need to have reasonable expectations um, with, with our accountability and everything too. Sometimes we forget our own boundaries and, and we think we're perfect when, when we're really not. So we need to have realistic expectations for ourselves as well. And if you're working with a coach, you need to have realistic expectations for a coach. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, it's not our job to track you down to do your check-in form. It's not your, it's not our job to please beg you to enter in your measurements and track your workouts and things like that. You hired us and you said you wanted us to do help you with this. So here we are going to provide you the tools and the means to do this. We're going to check in with you. We're going to ask you these hard questions to get to the bottom of these behaviors. But if you're not going to answer these questions or if you're going to get pissed off by our questions, then then that's just you're refusing to take responsibility and accountability for yourself. Yeah, it's tough and it's tough because what accountability and personal responsibility says is this is you. It's only you. It's all you. And only you can change this. And that sucks. For you to see change, you have to take ownership. Yes. You have to take ownership. It has to be coming from within. You can't be changing for other people. Like a lot of times people say, I want to change for my friend, my, my kids and things like that. Like, yeah, that's great. We should absolutely want to be a good role model for our kids and, and be healthy for our, for our kids and things like that. But at the end of the day, it still needs to be coming from for, for ourselves. We we've got to want to do it and we've got to be tired of our own fucking bullshit really at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, when I was drinking, I didn't take ownership for anything, nothing. I was, I fucking blamed everything Same. on everything else but me and Mm -hmm. i take full ownership i take full accountability for the person that i was then yeah it's that person did not take ownership she did not take accountability she blamed everything on everyone else and now i know i don't want to be that person ever again Mm -hmm. because it didn't get me anywhere nowhere nowhere good at least (laughs) nowhere fucking good yeah Yeah. then i did take ownership and took care of the shit that was holding me back and actually was like okay let's do this yeah. When you went through that change yourself and, and, and started with sobriety, did, did you lose friends or family members or anything like that? Because that's, we see that a lot mm-hmm. when you, when you start taking responsibility for your own shit, not just with drinking, but when you start taking responsibility, you might lose those quote unquote friends that you thought were friends, but they're, they're still not being responsible for themselves. So your, your boundaries and morals were non-existent, which is why that person was even in your life in the first place. Well, you know, I, I've, feel like I'm I'm not a unique situation really, but I didn't go out and drink you and I at home. wasn't like at the bars. I mean, I was like 42. So I was yeah. a stay at home mom at the time. And I did a lot of my drinking at home. I, I hit it. Um, I did lose a couple of people that were really toxic and that needed to be gone anyway. But other than that, I had really, I have a really supportive family. Most of them didn't believe that I had the problem that I had. So I hit it very well. I'm a very good at hiding my drinking. I would hide my wine, you know, whatever, pretend I wasn't drinking. You know, I don't know how I got away with it, but I did. So yeah, I, mm-hmm. I didn't really lose, unfortunately. I mean, fortunately, I should say. For, right. No, fortunately, yeah. um, it wasn't like that for me. I got you. And and personal responsibility and, and just accountability can apply to many different aspects of life. Um, this is something I can relate to personally. I've always, you know, I've been thinking I'm pretty accountable and I'm pretty responsible for my own shit for a very long time here um, until I started dating again. <laughs> and then I realized I was I was single for so long and I didn't have to be accountable to anybody else because I wasn't in a relationship. But when I entered that relationship, I had all of a sudden I was accountable to somebody else and I had, you know, it was my responsibility to be a good boyfriend and and things like that. And a lot of those things I wasn't ready to kind of face, like I wasn't ready to face like the fact that I I was working all the time and and this and this and this and whatever my flaws were, that definitely played into the, the problems that I had in that relationship, you know, just because I wasn't ready to be accountable and responsible. And Sierra would show me these things in a, in a polite way. And you know what my response would be a lot of the times is deflection. Like, no, I didn't do that. Or no, that's not that I would never do that. But then looking back at it, it's like, holy fuck, you're right. Like, 
I wasn't taking accountability for my own shit at that time, you know, and it's hard. It's, it, it really is hard because that's, that's, it shows growth when, and maturity when you're able to finally do those things. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. It is wild. So personal responsibility. And I, I looked, I looked this up. Um, there's like some general can agreed upon ways that you can start being more responsible. So first of whatever your situation is, you need to be able to understand your role in the situation. Let's say it's a, a coach client relationship. So you need to understand what your coach's role is and what your role is, what the tasks, responsibilities, and those deliverables are from each person, right? The deliverables as from a coach to client, from a client perspective, the deliverables are and responsibilities are, I'm going to track my food. If that's what you agree that you're going to do, I'm going to show up at the gym three times a week for my strength training. And I'm going to be open communication with you. I'm going to do my check-in form and I'm going to do my weekly measurements and things like that. And then the deliverables come in the form of the results that you get. And it's the other way around for, for the coach to client then too. You know, uh, as my as a coach, I'm going to check in with you four times a week or whatever it is. Um, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to have a call with you every week. I'm going to review all the metrics and the data that you're giving me. And I'm going to give you feedback on that data so we can make informed decisions. That's my responsibility as your coach. It's your responsibility to give me those things. Um, and that's kind of that partnership and how that works. It's like expectations Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's a team. And in order for that team to work, everybody's tasks and responsibilities need to be clearly defined and everybody needs to be on the same page and working towards those things. Otherwise, it's one ended and you're not going to you're going to somebody's going to be frustrated. We get personal with our clients. I know like I get oh, invested. Yeah. Right. So yeah. when you don't show up and you're not accountable to yourself, either I get worried to like something happened to you and I'm mm-hmm. like, holy fuck, are you? I hope you're OK. Like, yeah. You know? And it, it gets you in the feels. It's like, you really want, I want you to succeed. I want you to show up for yourself. And when you don't, it really fucking bums me out <laughs> because we can't make you do anything. And that's the unfortunate thing. That's the hardest part about being a coach is knowing that you can't fucking help everyone because you need the other person on the other side to be reciprocated. Back. Ready for change. Yes. And, yeah. And open and mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And because coaching is like the way that we coach, definitely, it's very intimate, it's very personalized, and it's very hands on. We build relationships with our clients. You know, I become friends with a lot of my clients after they're done working with us, you know, and I still keep up to date with a lot of them. Yeah. Um, it's a relationship. It's a lifelong thing. Honestly, it's not, we're not just bring them in to work with them six months, and then we're never going to talk to them again. That's not how we do things here. It's tough. It's tough. So then being honest with yourself and your coach in that situation is really important too. Ultimately, if you're not getting the results, there's a reason for the results. Maybe maybe the coach isn't doing their job. Maybe they're just a bad coach. But if they are doing everything right, if they have a calorie goal for you and you're not losing weight and, and we know that it's going to be a deficit for you, but you're taking two days off a week from tracking and you're not telling your coach, that's not being accountable. That's not being responsible for yourself. Yep. Because now you're not being honest. Now the coach doesn't have accurate data to make an informed decision w- with you. And now you're both going to be fucking frustrated. You're right. going to blame the coach. The coach is going to be saying, what, what the fuck? Like, I can't just call this person a liar, <laughs> you know, but I know something's going on here. So how do I address this? You know, it's difficult. And being honest when and open with ourselves. And it's tough too, because there's a fine line of being ridiculed like so many people are f- afraid of being ridiculed for their feelings and being honest and and i think with within our industry especially people are used to that so we so we as coaches need to be aware of that and we need to try to bridge that gap and try to break that barrier down and that's what we do absolutely with our content and our coaching mm-hmm. is just make this a more personable experience yeah but i know people have been burned by being honest or you know being called liars and and things like that by doctors or or coaches and and things like that so there's a lot of things that are that our own industry has done to kind of i guess entice people to not really be completely honest with our with us and themselves i don't know i don't know it's tough it's tough i think people have to realize like not everyone is the same you're not going to have the same experience with other people if you've had a bad experience with someone else doesn't mean you're going to have that with the next person either For sure. I find myself apologizing for other coaches all the time. Like, I'm so sorry you went through that with that coach. I'm sorry that fucking coach put you on a 800 calorie diet, you know, and blamed you then because you weren't able to stick with it. That's the coach's fault. That was not your fault. 
you know, so that, that goes along with, that goes along with accountability and responsibility too, is being able to apologize. If you've done something wrong, own it. Like I fucked up. I'm sorry. I'm going to work on that. And I'm going to ensure that that doesn't happen again. There's nothing wrong with fucking up. It's when you continue to fuck up and make the same mistake and refuse to apologize and refuse to take accountability for it. That's when it becomes a problem. We're going to make mistakes. We're not perfect. We're only human. I fuck up all the time, but I own it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I I fucked that up. For sure. For sure. (laughs) <laughs> Speaking of, I'm going to take accountability for this right now. I had a a meeting with a potential like guest speaker two Fridays in a row. And I fucking forgot both times that I had a meeting. So not only did I bail on this person one time, I bailed twice. And oh, I probably like, man, like that's a real asshole. Fucking dog shit. Yeah. And, you know, to the point where I, I sent an email voice message like, I am so fucking sorry. Like, this is not like me. And that that point. I knew that I was overdoing it. I was like, okay, if I'm forgetting meetings, you know, I'm not getting notifications. That's my own fault. Like, you know, it's no one else's, but mine. Perhaps you were overextended or something. And I think I need to stop saying yes and start saying no, because it's not like me to do stuff like that. So taking ownership and then adjusting accordingly. Yeah. That's a great example of, of owning your own shit there. Because that sucks getting ghosted and getting stood up for meetings because that happens to us all the time. It's fucked up. And not only to do it once, I did it twice. Yeah. Not cool. Beth. Well, props to you for for owning that. And hopefully, hopefully that relationship hasn't been strained because of that. And hopefully you guys can still continue to be friendly. Yeah. Yeah. I've never met this person before. Gotcha. I I know me personally, if that happened to me twice, I'm like, "Mm," like, I'm just never going to talk to this person again. But I kind of chalked it up to that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I sent that voicemail and I was like, okay. There's one thing that I will not put up with. It's people not respecting my time. Agree. Because we only have so much of it to give. We only have so much of it to give. And that goes along with managing our time wisely. Um, like you said, being able to say no. And that's hard as coaches. We're people, ple- like we're, we're servants. You know, we serve people. We help people every day, hundreds of people, thousands of people. It's so easy to just say yes to everything, but we have to be able to say no. So we need to have that time man- those time management skills. We also need to be able to set boundaries and boundaries are hard. Enforcing boundaries are even more difficult. I had to, I had to say no to somebody, um, one of my own people on my team last week, and that didn't feel good to, to say no. But um, we had group coaching start a couple of weeks ago and there was somebody that was wanting to sign up late after it already started. And I'm like, no, like the sign up deadline was Friday. The, the deadline was the deadline. And I said, I do not have the capacity to set somebody up right now. Like they're going to have to wait until the next round, you know, yeah. and they were pushing back on it and they weren't very happy about it. I'm like, listen, I said, no, I don't have the mental and physical capacity to do this at, at, at this time. Um, and that's the bottom line. That's the end of the discussion. And that was hard, but I, I set that boundary. I was unwavering with that boundary because if I would have said that boundary and then not enforced it, then people are going to start walking all over me. That's the thing. People aren't going to respect me anymore. Mm-hmm. So I don't know where I was going with that, but it's that just, just owning our shit and saying, no, um, we need to get better at saying no, for sure. Yeah. My new, my, my mantra is like, it's not a fuck. Yes. It's a fuck. No type thing. And that's the thing that's going to set you up for for being a person that's accountable. Absolutely. Because if you're doing things, saying things that you know that you can't show up for, you're setting Mm -hmm. yourself up for lack of responsibility. Yeah, absolutely. We need to know our limitations too. So we need to know our time limitations, our physical limitations. We're not going to try to squeeze in five days a week in the gym for 60, 60 minutes at a time, right? If we can only, if our limitations are three days a week for 45 minutes at a time, you know, you're trying to fit a square, a square peg into a round hole, essentially at that, at that point. That's an Eric Cressy saying, he's, <laughs> I've been to a few of his seminars. He's like, don't you fit a square peg in a round hole. Yeah, it's it's true. It's true. <laughs> then the smart ass me would be like, well, what if the the square peg is smaller than the hole? You could, you know. Oh, of course he would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking nerdle. Yeah. Nerdle always trying to get away with something. I'm always trying to push the boundaries and push the limits. boundaries. Yeah. Find a loophole. Yep. <laughs> and then also with the responsibility and accountability is we need to be open to change. You know, when we take personal accountability for our actions and choices and behaviors, we'll want to kind of look back at a situation and assess like what went well here, what didn't go well. And on the things that didn't go well, like we we, we adapt from there. Um, we ask for feedback, like if we're working with a coach, right? The client, are you taking a picture? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Got it. Love it. Love it. I was trying to sneak. You caught me. I caught you. I, I saw. I saw you looking down and, and smirking like you like you do. <laughs> But if if it's a client coach relationship, like I encourage all my clients, ask for feedback, ask questions, send in form check videos, mm-hmm. be open to, to to criticism, but constructive criticism, you know, and then be willing to kind of apply those things that we're learning after we're asking for that for 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 help there. And then we want to be focused on and outcome driven too, really, rather than in the moment. And not having any clear actions and and plans and things like that, because then it's going to be a lot harder to be um, accountable mm-hmm. if you don't if you don't have an outcome in mind. Right, you're not accountable to anything. Then accountability is misrepresented for what it what it is. Accountability, like you said, it's not holding, it's not hand holding, it's not babysitting. If you're working with a coach and they're sitting there holding your hand every step of the way and babysitting you and babying you, that's not accountability. That's enabling you, and that is teaching you to depend on them as your coach. Accountability, we, we, we hold you accountable so that you can eventually hold yourself accountable and be accountable to yourself. So when you're doing these things with us and we're holding you accountable, you're, you're, you're going to build that confidence. You're going to build that self-esteem for yourself so that you trust yourself to, to hold yourself accountable, essentially. Exactly. That's the, that's the, long, that's the long-term plan there. Yeah. You don't want something to someone to hold your hand. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Or, or someone to consistently be up your ass. Who wants that? No. <laughs> not me. You don't want me up your ass, trust me. No. I mean, not that I would know. <laughs> <laughs> what what do you think? Po- accountability, responsibility, same fucking thing in my opinion. That's really cut and dry. I mean, there's not a much not much to talk about on that topic, I think. And this is kind of a, a reoccurring theme that we kind of just talk about throughout the year anyway. So just kind of putting more focus and emphasis on it every once in a while is, is important. We just need some good reminders once in a while. We do. We absolutely need reminders. Even as coaches, we need these reminders. I know when I'm going through like our mindful eating group coaching program, we do a different topic and con- and new concepts every week to- for everybody. And some of the times I'm like, oh shit, like I've been neglecting that skill. Like I haven't been, t- I haven't been being mindful in that area of my life, or I haven't been using the stop skill appropriately and things like that. So one of the things we always ask our group coaching clients at the end of the call, we do it, we do a check-in and we do a check-out. And part of the check-out process is something you observed from this week's material and the lessons, and then something that you're going to reflect on. And I think if you do that for uh, with any situation that you're in, any experience, good or bad, observe and reflect, I think you're going to learn a lot about yourself. Yeah. Observe and reflect. Not to get confused with serve and protect. <laughs> I don't know. It's not serve and protect. <laughs> really quickly, since we haven't done a one-on-one episode in a while... Let's talk about the Patreon really quickly before we go our separate ways for today. So Patreon, guys, is very fucking exciting. We have some exciting things coming up in store for the Patreon. If you're new to the show, our Patreon offers monthly workout plans and challenges and fucking no, more than 200, over 200 recipes at this point with new recipes added every week that are lower calorie, high protein. Beth and I are getting together here soon to collaborate and we're going to be planning something. Have you gotten plane tickets yet? Um, no, I was actually going to look at that today because that's a little over a month away. So going to do that. I'm saying I'm going to do it, Beth. So now it's time to be held accountable to that. I was going to say I'm going to hold your fucking that. ass so, accountable. See, we hold do. each other accountable too. Yes, absolutely. Beth and I are always... All the time. Yeah, we, we're checking in with each other. We we swear at each other a lot, but mm-hmm. like move your ass bitch or something, you know? But, yeah, or tell me to take some fucking time off. Yeah, which you did, by the way. Like did. on Monday, how, I did, really. How was that? Felt good. Yeah. It's weird because I don't do you, I don't know if you feel this way, but I consistently feel this way. When I try to take a day off or take a day off from working, I feel like I'm fucking like fucking my business up. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like I am mm-hmm. mentally trying to step out so I can become be better. Mm-hmm. And I have a hard time not thinking about it all the time. Yes, I do. I struggle with that too. It's because it's, it's our baby. Like, this is what we fucking yeah. like this. We're building this thing that we love. Like it's our business and it's us. And it's like, if we're not there, like what's going to happen, you know, is it going, is it going to fail? If, if I'm not there to, to check in with my clients a couple of days, like 
I would hope that that doesn't mean that it's going to throw my clients off track. And it doesn't, of course, right. because we're teaching them the right way to do things. We're not teaching them to rely on us. Um, but I struggle with that too. I took a day off last week, actually, um, after coming home from Mexico, I just wasn't feeling it. Like, no, I just, I'm just going to do nothing on, on Thursday was last week is when I did that. Yeah. Usually Thursday is our client check-in day for me, but I had gotten home later on, like, you know, one o'clock in the morning, Wednesday or going into Thursdays. I was like, I'm not going to do anything tomorrow. I'm just going to take a me day. And I did, I literally, I, I went on my walk in the morning. I sat down and I binged watched Game of Thrones, actually finally starting Game of Thrones many years later. I've never watched it. I'm, I'm totally into it, which I knew I would be, which mm-hmm. is why I haven't watched it yet, because I was like, this is going to ruin my life. I'm just going to sit, yeah, yeah. sit there and binge eight seasons of Game of Thrones in a weekend or something. But <laughs> no, I, I think I watched like five or six episodes that day. So it was good, though. We need yeah. those days. We need those. You listen to your body. You listen to your mind. It goes a long way. I know I actually had a client last week. She was talking to me about how stressed and fatigued she was feeling and she was just dreading going to the gym and everything. And I was like, I'm not going to say her name. I was like, listen, I was like, uh, we need to do a deload. Like you, like it's time for us to, to take a step back from the gym. Um, so we took five days off of the gym um, un, unprompted. Like it wasn't even part of the plan, but we need to be able to listen to our body and, and do yeah. those things. So she took five days off of the gym and she got back to it yesterday, I think. And she's feeling really good, coming back stronger, more, more mental clarity, more focus and everything too. So um, we need to be able to listen to our body and take downtime. Yep. A hundred percent. Yep. Okay. So the Patreon, um, so we're going to be doing um, some hikes for everybody at, at some different locations. I think we, have we talked about this on the podcast or not? I can't remember. Yeah. We're going to be doing location hikes. We're going to start traveling around together, collaborating, and we want to get more people involved in hiking with us. Yes. So stay tuned for those exciting announcements. Cause we're going to be doing those here soon. I'm excited. Hell yeah. Me too. Nerdle. Fucking love hiking. Fuck yeah. That's like my favorite thing to do anymore. I just oh, love it. I, I'm I'm literally obsessed with hiking. Like if I could just travel and just go hiking everywhere. I would. I know. Damn it. Freaking responsibilities. <laughs> I have so many bucket list hikes. Yeah. Yeah. We'll map those out and we'll do them. We'll mm-hmm. do them. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Nerdle. Well, this is a good one. Okay. <laughs> Peace out. Hope you enjoyed this episode. So why not share it with a friend who needs to hear it? Send us a DM on Instagram or email us at cutthecrappod at gmail.com and join our Patreon at patreon.com slash cutthecrappodcast. As always, we appreciate you and thanks for being here.